Okay, so for the quick recording of this version, let's go over again the materials that we want to explain to you for this week and next week. Since the, the slides that we're going to create are going to be recorded and observed on campus, you don't really need to start this guy right now. Just be aware that you want to plan about a good 10 minutes of your time so that you can set this up. And remember, you need to have that growth that you've been saving at home in your fridge, in a baggie or whatever it is, so you can run this bad boy up. And so from home, as stated in the uh, handout, and I'm stating it again, make sure that you're going to have access to a little bit of clean water. It doesn't need to be distilled or anything like that. We're going to be using this for washes, right? You're going to want to have a few different disposable containers because you are going to be staining them and you're not going to be able to reuse them again. So make sure you're okay with throwing those away. I'll show you what my versions are. You want to have some sort of catch trap or catch all for this so that all the fluid can flow. You're going to want to have access to a flame, uh, some sort of lighter. This is one of the requirements we have on campus. So any lighter will do. Do not use the stove. You will burn yourself. Please don't do that. Uh, you want to have access to a cleaning detergent, preferably something that is powdered based to help you polish your slides as opposed to liquid ones, but don't go out of your way to obtain them. It'll still clean them. Um, and then you want to have some sort of timer like your phone, like a watch or something like that to help you out. And because we're playing with stains, again, the heads up, this is why we do pre-labs in the first place, is make sure you're fully geared up, not only for your mouth, but also for your hands and making sure that your clothing that you're going to be wearing is stuff that you're willing to sacrifice just in case you get it stained, because this stuff does not come off. Basically, if you don't want to have a, a temporary tattoo for the next few months, keep yourself nice and clean. And since we're going to be playing with flames, again, be aware of your fire alarm because the smoke will hit it and you'll have some fun at home or wherever you may be. Then for the uh, materials that we need from your kit, you should have, again, one plate, one broth, one slant, something growing. It doesn't matter. You just only need one of them. That means your cooties that you grew from home, your bathroom, your kitchen, whatever. And then the Ziploc baggie that contains all the stains, which are all numbered. Uh, there's only one stain for lab 14. There's four of those for lab 16, and there's a possible uh, fifth one with water, which may or may not be present in your baggie. You should have gotten or obtained four glass slides. You're only going to need two, but they're spares just in case they break or something like that. And then you should have some plastic pipettes, some good old pasture pipettes. You should have some big ones, some small ones. You're only going to need one small one. The other ones are spare also. And then you're going to be using the very last inoculum possibly that you should have saved. One of those last ones that should be sterile that has a loop and a needle. You only need one of those. And then part of those pre-lab warnings, as always, one of the biggest warnings is if you have an iodine allergy, you are playing directly with iodine. So please be aware, either be super gloved, triple gloved, whatever, or ask somebody else to help you with that step just in case. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to remind you that you're playing with glass, so please be careful. Then to kind of come up with the uh, protocol for this, we're going to do a prep of preparing smears. That's what lab uh, Roman numeral nine is in which we have to clean our slide, rinse it really well, because any soap will kind of destroy it, dry it off, set up your working area, which I'm going to do in a moment, which is what you see on my side screen with a piece of paper. And then we're going to set up dual smears on them, which I'll also demonstrate, in which you're going to air dry them by doing a little bit of a repetitive circular motion. Let them sit there for a little while. Typically, about five, 10 minutes, we'll do the trick under air. And then we'll actually start the staining protocol. All of this has been written in the handouts already and multiple times in the videos. So once we set this up, we'll do the stain for lab 14 and we'll do the exact same stain for lab 16. So what do those look like? Here's a quick written form because you're not gonna be able to see them when I demonstrate them. For lab 14, it's just one stain, one minute and then wash and you'll be done. For the gram stain, there's four steps in which they're all one minute with the exception of the third step in which it's meant to be very fast and stopped very fast with the alcohol, which would only take about three seconds to do. Once you're done with these two sets of stains, you're going to end up with two slides again. That's the stuff you want to take with you to the lab. That's the stuff we're going to observe under the microscope in person. So this setup is what you need to do uh, once you get a chance. So let me show you what we're going to do uh, in terms of setup at home. So you need to have access to some things. So let me kill this slide really quick. And you should be able to now see my full screen of just my bench, 
which is basically my desk. And so what I have here is a little piece of paper that I'm gonna use as my setup. And so you should always have Sharpies or pencils or something like that. And what I'll do is divide this really quick, right? It's a very simple division. And I'll set up my lab 14 on my left and I'll set up my lab 16 on my right. So get used to kind of setting up your own little benches this way. I'm usually using a piece of paper, anything will honestly do, but that's the plan. And so I usually like to mark even where my slide goes to help me kind of find the locations. And I even mark where the uh, uh, frosted version of the glass is. I already have my slides clean, so I don't have to worry about them too much. So there's a little slide over there. You can see the little frosted area over there. And if your slide does not have a little frosted area, don't worry about it. But here's where I'm gonna mark, you know, this is my lab 14 or whatever. And then I can just chuck it over there. And so I already have, again, some clean slides. So I'm not worried about it. So here's my lab 16 one. So I'm just gonna write it over there, there's 16. Uh, when we're in the actual lab in person, we end up having to write a lot more because lots of people are doing this and they can get confusing. But here's my setup, there it is. So normally we would write what organism we are uh, using. In this case, we're gonna be using cooties from home. Right, so you don't have to write that much, so don't worry about it. And you wanna make sure your slides were already clean. Again, powder will do the better job of polishing it, but any cleanser will do its job. Just make sure you rinse it really, really well because any little bit of soap will disrupt your stain. So run it underwater a good chunk of time. So that's, that's it. This is my little paper bench that I always refer to. And it kind of helps me mark my steps. So I can always say, you know, stain number one, written. And once I've done with it, I can just go check. I'm done with it. I'm, you know, I, I know I've done this step or cross it off. So it kind of helps you keep track of things. Now I did tell you, you want to have some stuff from home. So I'm going to move my little guy over here from the side. So I'll have to come back to it because I don't have a lot of room. And here's what I want to uh, suggest for you to have from home. And so I'm literally just stealing good old cloth from home. There's nothing fancy about this. This is not a scientific tool. This is a good old cloth, right? And you can see how dark my humor is because I like everything black. So this is just a little chunk of a cloth that I'm going to open up so I can catch my spills because I am going to spill. I guarantee you that. And I set it up. So this helps you keep your bench at home nice and clean, whatever your desk, kitchen, sink, whatever. I'm having a little piece of paper there. I told you also you want to have a catch-all. So I'm using disposable plates. These are your classic little uh, Dixie bowls that hold cereal and soup. Nothing fancy about them. Uh, so this I can throw away immediately. I have a bunch of them just in case. So here's my little catch-all. And then you wanna have a place that is a receptacle for your slides. Now there's various different versions. Um, I like to use the little plastic disposable cups because they fit perfectly with our slides. So watch as I use one of my slides, they'll hold them really well. Here's what I find. So, I'm not sure what my phone is doing over here, but let's ignore that guy. Um, and so as they hold it, you'll be able to put both of your slides right there. Bam, right? So it works really well. So I'm gonna put these guys back. There we go. And so then I also to have, ask, ask you to have a lighter. Now, I don't encourage lighters either for other reasons, but I don't want you to burn yourself. I'm gonna pretend that it's my birthday. And so I have a birthday candle, right? This is your classic, you know, five cent candle that you can steal from somebody. Find somebody's birthday, steal it from their cake, get it. That's what you want to do. And so I'm going to use the old rudimentary version of using an old flame with uh, a pair of matches in a moment that I'll show you. And that's about it. So that's your stuff from home. I usually will have another one of these guys full of water. I cheat because obviously I have all my kits over here. So... I actually have, whoops, a beaker full of water, in this case, an Erlenmeyer flask, right? So I don't have to worry about it. You can use whatever you wish, any bowl, any bottle, any anything. Just I have a lot more access to this guy. So I'm going to put him off to the side as I move my camera really quick again. Whoops, I keep on doing this. I keep on banging into this guy too much. So sorry about that. Let's see if we can do this a little bit better. There we go. And so I'll have some spare ones over here as well, just in case something goes wrong. And for this case, you already saw, seen me do this before. I'm going to create a bunch of little aluminum uh, places so they can hold my tubes. 
right? So now I happen to be fancy because I have my professional ones. So I don't need to create those, but you probably will. So I can hold my samples in there. And so enter your kit. So let me put this guy off to the side for a little bit without me knocking it over again a few more times. Kit, same stuff you all have. Might be a bigger baggie, might be a smaller baggie, but it has all the stuff you need in there. So let's open it up. I'm gonna remove a little piece of paper and put it over here. So, and then let's let this guy all slide out. And as we do this, I'll order them. We're gonna need these pipetters. Doesn't matter if they're bent, they're just plastic. They'll still do their job. So I'm gonna put these off to the side. Here's your slides. Again, you should be able to wash them and rinse them out later. I've already done mine, so I'm gonna put mine off to the side. And here's all your stuff. And so you're gonna to have to focus on these really close. For example, this one says 14, it might not come off as clear as yours. Now you should be able to tell that it's this deep blue. And so this is for lab 14, so that's your methylene blue. And then as you start kind of going through all of these guys, you'll see that there's labels on them. This one says 16.2. So this is your iodine. You can also kind of tell that it has this copperish brownish color to it, right? This is your uh, safranin, who has this deep red color onto it. Here's um, my crystal violet, which came in a different color vial. Here's your ethanol, 16.3. So again, it looks like water. This is alcohol, peeps. So let me put them over there. And maybe, just maybe, you might have gotten a vial of water. Not everybody got it. This is just good old regular water. Get your own if you don't have anyone in there. So I'm just going to put mine off to the side. All right, so now the setup is get our sample. I'm gonna use my broth one because it's easier. Again, you can use your plate, you can use whatever you wish. And then I'm gonna bring my slides that I have over here already and create the smears. Now, the first thing you wanna do is to make your job a lot easier is mark it from the back. So I'm gonna grab my marker over here, Sharpie. Notice that again, I've written 14 on the top. So I'm actually gonna flip this and I'm gonna mark where my smears are gonna go. So I'm gonna put one over here and one over here. So they're on the underside of where I marked. So when I flip it, they're below my slide, okay? So that's how we're gonna create two of them. So I'm gonna do this one backwards so you can see the same thing. I'm gonna mark it from under. I'm gonna put one over here, one over there, roughly speaking. So there's the two slides. Put my little Sharpie away. So let's set them up. You have your inoculum, you have your sample. Normally in the lab, we would flame uh, all of these well to keep them sterile. Since we're using sterile ones already, we don't have to do that. They're already ready to go. So you wanna add drops of water onto this guy. So I'm gonna actually do it over the little piece of paper so you can see it a little bit more clear. By using that practice technique that you all saw from the uh, videos is that we would just want to have a little bit of water. I already filled mine with water. Okay. And just a small drop of it so that it dries quickly. The bigger the drop of water, the longer you're going to be waiting. So this takes a couple of little bits of practice to get a tiny drop of water going on. So I'm going to try and show this to you. There's tiny little drops of water on these guys, right? See this? So the smaller, the better. So if you want to practice that out, practice that out. And here's the trick of today. Loop, sample, whichever sample you're gonna use, again, plate, slant, whatever. I'm gonna have all four of my slides ready to go. So I'm gonna do this really quick, just in case. I'm gonna drop here, tiny drop, baby drop. And then I'm gonna run one big smear. So I'm gonna take the sample. You may have to resuspend it a little bit, kind of shake it around in case it's liquid. Take a little bit. Honestly, this is more than enough. And again, just add it to these guys. This is not the normal protocol that we would use. We would do one by one if we were in the lab. But since we only have one of these guys, here's the smearing process. Take it and just circles and big friggin' circles that you're doing over here. Because the more you spread it out, the clearer your sample will be. And I jump to the next one and do it immediately. Notice that I'm not picking up any new stuff. I literally took the first one and went to the second one straight out. And this is diluting it. So I'm gonna do it with this guy too. Big circles. 
So your sample was on my little inoculum and I'm just kind of spreading it out. Big old friggin' circles. Like I said, do it a few times. So the more you spread it out, the faster these will air dry. I'm done with this guy so I can throw them away. We can discard them so we don't need them anymore. And here's our two samples that need to air dry. Now, what I mean by this is literally let them sit there. If you try and hurry it up, if you try and blow on them or something like that, you'll just aerosolize things. So you need to let them sit there. Depending on your environment, depending on you know, where you're sitting, it might draw out in five minutes, might take 10 minutes, but they need to air dry. On campus, we have air dryers, so that helps us out. At home, we don't. Now, when you start seeing them dry, you're gonna notice one thing. You might not be able to see it yet, but if you do a little bit of a reflection bit over here, you'll start seeing this little film start popping up on it. And that tells us that it's dried up. So when it looks like all kind of icky and gooey, they're good to go. Now we're gonna do the heat fixing portion, which have Bunsen burners and uh, bench heaters on campus. I'm gonna be using my birthday candle. So matches, nothing out of the ordinary there. Hopefully I don't catch fire. Somebody call, you know, 911 if anything happens. Okay. Here's my birthday little candle over here. Happy birthday to me. And what we're going to do is literally pass the slide under it fast, peeps. We don't want to let it sit because I'll show you what happens is you're going to do a very quick motion under it. Notice that I didn't sit there. I didn't let it hang in there. It's a quick pass to heat fix it. If you let it sit, let me show you what's gonna happen because you'll see it on the slide, it gets burnt. I'm gonna take a practice slide and you'll see this, it burns it out. Let's see if I can remove this really quick. Kill my little uh, candle over here. And so now you're not gonna be able to see Jack, it's all burnt up. Now the good thing about this is with the paper towel, I have paper towels over here with me, it actually comes off, see this? bam, it's back to clean. So it's just soot. So there's nothing really to worry about. So if you happen to do like I did, a little bit of an extra burn behind it, take a paper towel, bam, back to normal peeps, back to normal. All right, so let me kind of move around my slides really quick so I can do a quick stain. So I'm gonna pause for half a second over here, record. So let's clear out our fancy bench that we set up. So I'm gonna take my slides and put them out with my paper bench, get rid of all the things I don't need, including my heat fix portion, all right? Just a quick candle, again, clean it up. And now I'm gonna set up my staining portion. So again, like I said, these little vials work really well. Um, you can use things like little shot glasses, little cups. Um, I have these little sauce containers sometimes that work really well too. So, and those were like a dollar at the dollar store as well. So they'll do the trick, whatever you need. And so we're gonna stain. And this is where the skill comes in. Lab 14, lab 16, let me move it over here. Here's my lab 14 methylene blue. And all you're doing, make sure again, you have gloves, this will start getting on you, is literally covering the slide. Have to do a little bit of a shake in there. That's it. And this is what I like about the cat trap. It's going to just go, screw it. I'm leaving it there. I don't have to run around looking for a trash can or anything like that. And it has to sit there for one minute. So we're going to pretend the one minute passes just for the sake of time. But let it sit there for one minute. If it sits there for 70 seconds, it's okay. If it sits there for two minutes, nobody's going to die. Okay. But go for the minute. That's kind of our standard protocol. And once it's done, we want to rinse it out. The problem is that waterfall term that you've heard me state, and it's recorded too, you can't just hit it with water straight on. If you hit it with water straight on, it'll usually splash. It'll also remove all that hard work that you just finished working on. So be patient. Instead, you do this technique that I call waterfalling. And I'm going to use my uh, bit of water that you can't quite see over here. But the idea is, let me move this guy out of the way, is that I'm going to let it collect in here. That way I'm not getting anything else dirty and I have my catch trap just in case I spill. But I'm gonna hit the slide from where the number is and I'll let it waterfall down as opposed to hitting the sample directly. 
If you hit it with water, it'll just splash off and you'll lose all your stuff. So hit it where the number is. Now I'm gonna put this back up here so I can grab my um, vial. I just realized that because the camera's so close that you're not gonna be able to see my little beaker over here that is massive. So I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use one of my little guys like this just to help you guys see it. And again, this is just water peeps. There's nothing out of the ordinary. This came out of the tap. So there's my water. That way you guys can see me do this. And here's this waterfall process that I'm referring to. I'm gonna hold it and I'm actually going to hit the number. I'm gonna go after the number 14 as opposed to the slide itself. And I'm gonna let it rinse off from it. So what you're seeing is me almost hitting my finger on purpose so it can rinse it all out. And now your slide should be relatively clean. And you're done, that's it. That's slab 14. You rinse it out once and I use most of, most of my water so it should be good to go. Now it has a little bit of stain under it. That's probably because of the edge over here, but that will be able to be cleaned off. It's a paper towel. So I just wiped it off. There's a little bit of stain under it and I'm done with this guy. Bam, put it back over there, save it for uh, next time we're going into the lab session. Now we're gonna set up for lab 16. This bad boy, so it's gonna be a little more complex. Not sure if you can tell, but it looks like it's dried off. So you can see this little film on it. That's how you know it's air dried and heat fixed, All right? So let's do our last step. Again, minute, minute, three seconds, minute. That's the, the breakdown for the gram stain. So here's all my stain steps over here that I kind of already saved. Those are those. I'm gonna take crystal violet, which is the 16 one. You can see a label over there. Pop it up, same idea, let it sit there. We're gonna count one minute. I'm gonna discard that guy over there so I don't have to worry about him. One minute, right? Now, while we're waiting one minute, you wanna prepare your water. So I'm gonna, you're gonna see me set it up over here. And let's pretend that one minute passed simply because again, I'm trying to save the video time for you guys. Done with one minute, let it sit in there. And again, I'm gonna try and hit the number or possibly my thumb to rinse it out not the actual slide itself. So I'm hitting my thumb, not the slide. Nice and rinsed with some water. We're gonna go to step two, iodine. Again, warning if you have an iodine allergy. Pop it, cover it. Whoops, I missed kind of my number over here. Just gonna move it around a little bit. There it goes, it's sitting there perfectly. One more minute, again, wait for your minute. Once it's done, I still have some water, same idea. Let it catch into the uh, vessel, rinse it out. Again, waterfall, never direct. And here's the key step. Again, this is the only vial that will look transparent and be labeled, and this is alcohol. This is not water. So that's a 16.3 version. And we only want it to sit there three seconds. So you're gonna hear me do this on purpose so that I don't make a mistake. I'm gonna have my alcohol ready, but I'm also gonna have water ready to make sure I can stop it within three seconds. So let me prepare some water. There's some water ready over here for me. Whoops, sorry for the camera shake over there. Get my little stain thing. Alcohol, pop it open. Don't drink it, I know it's tempting. So. Three seconds, so watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour it, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, water, waterfall. I stopped it immediately. I didn't let it sit there for more than three seconds. I mean, if you hit four, possibly five, you'll be fine. But honestly, if you let it sit there for more than five seconds, you're gonna lose everything you have. Now, fair warning, because it is alcohol, Sharpie will be erased too, so be careful with that. So we reach the final minute of our stage, which is 16-4. This is your crystal, uh, not your crystal wire, I'm sorry, your saffronin, a nice and reddish hue behind it. Same idea, it's important on top. Let that guy sit for a minute. And I'm gonna grab a little bit more water while I'm pretending to wait a minute over there. Water, just in case. And let's say a minute has passed. Let it go into the receptacle. 
Waterfall, again, never hitting the slide directly, just hitting the number or your fingers. It's nice and rinsed out. And voila, we are done. That's it. Gram stain has been completed for slide 16. You can put it on my little marker over here. And that's it. These are the two slides you need to bring to campus so you can observe, okay? Put them in a safe place. Make sure that nothing touches the top of them because you will get them kind of rubbed off and lost. So let me get this guy out of the way and let me remove or return literally what we just did. Slide 14, one stain, one minute, done. Stain 16, three stains and a wash with alcohol and we're done. Take these two guys, bring them to campus. We'll look at them under the microscope. That is absolutely all we're doing for this particular lab at home.